Um, yeah, so hi everyone. Um, it looks like more people can't join us, but I'm recording it and I'm going to send it to everyone's email too. So if for some reason you need to go back over the information, you'll have it. Um, my name is Rachel. Um, I work for an organization, a Web3 organization called Pambala. So does Yaler. Um, and Pambala has put together this kind of educational series for newbies to the space. And today's class is on how to work in the Web3 community. Um, so I don't know Bryce or Zachary, but I would love to hear uh, what you would like to get out of today um, and maybe what your background is, because that'll help us kind of direct the conversation. OK, uh, can I start? Fairly new to crypto. Um, been entering in a, a few groups to try and gain some understanding. Uh, I'm part of a, a group called Cryptosphere. And I saw in their study group that um, your guys' classes were available. And I, I was part of the last one. I think it was um, 102. I could look back in my notes the last time you guys held the meeting. Um, super informative. And um, now I'm really just trying to wrap my head around Web3 and to be quite honest, understand what, exactly what it is and, and how we use it because I, I hear it thrown out there so much and it's something that I'm unfamiliar with and just looking for more education uh, as I am with kind of everything in the crypto world. Are you still there? Hello? Yeah, thank you. No, we heard you. Okay. Thank you. We're just waiting for anyone else who wants to share their, their background or what they would like to get out of today's session. Uh, I personally... Uh, of course, the, uh, the the instructions and guides about the, the crypto and uh, newbies are uh, interesting to me. I, I I definitely learned some stuff that I was uh, being neglect neglectful of. That's hard to say. Neglectful of in the previous sessions, even though I, I've been active in the space uh, for like three years. The other thing that I'm really uh, uh, present for is also. Uh, observing Gaylor and Rachel and others and how they uh, they are trying to uh, like guide others that that's what I'm uh, also interested in because yeah I'm, I'm in touch with different organizations who are interested in learning about crypto but uh, I, I want to know where you start and uh, which parts are the, uh, the critical or key parts that we should be careful when we are introducing something this complicated to new buys. That, that, that's what brings me here. Amazing. Thank you, Pastor. Bryce, do you have anything you want to share? No worries. Um, so that's great. That's good information. Um, I think to, since we have a smaller group, we can make this really informal. Um, I'd like to just give a brief overview <clears throat> of the landscape, the way I see it today, and then um, take questions and just like maybe just start a little bit of discussion of like the different pathways you can go down and maybe a bit of a background experience on like how I got in this space and what the pathways I took to becoming successful in this space were. Um, so first of all, there are an unlimited number of ways to contribute um, in Web3, whether that's freelancing, full-time work, um, you know, nights and weekends, or founding your own project. Um, it all depends on how you want to structure your contributions and what your needs are. What I find is that it's really good to find something that is both a deep personal interest to you, whether it's a problem you want to see solved in the world, or it's um, a, a hobby or something that you've always been interested in. Like I know a lot of people who come into the space and they're like, well, I don't have any technical skills, but I'm, you know, I really love art and design. And so even if they were not a designer or an artist to begin with, 
they can start doing some of this work and picking up some of like the bounties or little different um, hackathon projects that are out there and they can contribute with another group of people or solo independently and start to get a bit of what I would say is like their portfolio together because in the web three space, it really matters like what you do, like what you've done. It's, it's, it's more tricky in the beginning with little experience um, because the space is so based on trust. Um, people need to trust you that you're able to execute and then do what you say you're going to do. But I think the most important thing is that if you agree to do something like I, this, this probably is like standard for any space, but if you agree to do something the, to follow through on, on what you agree to do, and if you're working on a project or a group um, to stay, to stay focused and to like really contribute what you have to offer. I know a lot of people who balance full-time work in the, you know, web two or traditional corporations and uh, working in web three, freelancing, contributing to projects. And some people do it purely out of interest because it's a fascinating space to be in. Things are evolving so fast. And some people do it because they want to receive um, a different type of financial compensation, perhaps one that more aligns with the values they have or the change they want to see happen in the world. And the different pathways to go down that, as I see it right now, are um, organizations. So there are crypto organizations like companies. Some are based in the US and some are based all over. Most of them have a decentralized contribution force. So MakerDAO would be one. MakerDAO is an organization that they created the DAI stable coin um, as among, along, along. Among, among a bunch of other different uh, pieces of software that allow uh, the community to be able to use these tools to um, take cryptocurrencies and do really interesting things on the decentralized finance infrastructure that we have. So they have a company, they're based in Switzerland and they hire people full-time and part-time as well as part of their, uh, they have like grants programs to build infrastructure for MakerDAO. That's a pretty traditional organization in my perspective because they have um, teams all over the place. They're running a lot of meetings and such, and they have like, you know, payroll and they, they probably pay in uh, fiat instead of crypto, which um, it's a toss up. Some, some people pay in crypto, some people pay in fiat. I think it all depends on what you, uh, what you like. But the cool thing about DAI is DAI is a currency that's pegged to the US dollar. So if you use US dollars, which a lot of people do, you can get your crypto payments in a US dollar pegged coin that will never lose its value. It'll never go below a dollar. You have a question? Yes. Yeah, I have two questions. Uh, just if, and maybe you might be explaining them later, but two words you said that might not be very familiar, hackathon and fiat. If you could explain those two things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll circle back to hackathon uh, on the last one. But fiat basically just means like traditional currency, fiat currency. It's, I think it might be a Latin word. I'm not entirely sure. But when we say crypto, we mean like cryptocurrencies, digital coins, tokens. And when we say fiat, we mean US dollars, uh, euros, yen, rubles, shekels, like uh, anything that's traditional, basically. Um, it's a, a popular word in the crypto space for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> Give me crypto, not fiat. Um, yeah. So that's the rundown on MakerDAO. And that's what I would say the traditional crypto organization um, is. And you can find out more about them by going to the link I posted in the chat. Um, you can read, they have tons of forums. They've been around for a long time. They have a huge workforce of people and they're, they're maintaining a really important piece of infrastructure for the crypto community because having a currency that's pegged to a local currency is very helpful. Let's say you have 10 ETH. And the price of ETH goes from $1,000 to $2,000. And you're like, well, okay, that's great. I want to like hold on to some of that and make sure that like I have my rent payment covered for the next six months. So you can sell 10 ETH for, I don't know what the math is, 20,000 DAI or something. And then you can hold, or you can sell half and then you can hold it in DAI. And as long as it's in DAI and it's in your wallet, it'll just sit there and you don't have to worry about the price dipping or crashing or anything like that. Um, the next path is DAOs, and DAOs are decentralized autonomous organizations. 
they're this wild new way of structuring um, what we call what I would consider a digital cooperative. So if you've ever uh, been part of a workers cooperative or even like um, a cooperative of like food share um, where you get like, you know, a basket of veggies from your local farm, this is like that for whatever project um, people are inspired to work on. So uh, DAOs, the, 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 my, fa my favorite platform for DAOs is called DAO House. Um, and DAO House is, they're calling it the home for DAOs. They are, uh, there's different types of DAOs. Um, we should just do a session on DAOs one day just to like, just to give people the rundown on that. But like DAO, a DAO is just a smart contract. It has a ton of functionality. So it's like, it's minted, it's created um, on Ethereum with a bunch of addresses, whichever ones you decide. So if I start a DAO with this group and I say, we're gonna be the education DAO, I add Rachel, Bryce, Zachary, and Paslar. I add all of your Ethereum addresses, and then I set up the votes, and I say, okay, um, we need to have at least 20% of shares voting in order for a quorum to be reached for us to pass a proposal. And so let's say we share a treasury or a budget. Um, we can vote on how we want to spend those funds and who the new members of the DAO will be. Um, that's a really cool way of basically having a a company or a cooperative group on the Ethereum blockchain. Um, there are DAOs, investment DAOs, there are philanthropy DAOs, there are grant giving DAOs. There are all kinds of new DAOs being spun up right now. And we strongly believe that DAOs will be a massive force for bringing communities together, helping align incentives and giving them the powerful tools they need to accomplish whatever they want to accomplish as a community. Um, and if you click on DAOhouse.club and you check it out, You'll see all the different DAOs that are there. There's a lot of great articles about how DAOs are changing the world and how people um, who are being a part of DAOs are uh, thinking about things differently. And you can work for DAOs. So I was hired to work for, well, not hired. I applied to join um, my first DAO in uh, February of 2020. And in that time, from then to now, I've joined eight DAOs and started five DAOs. And in the beginning, I was like, I have no idea how to, how could I like run a DAO? How could I start a DAO? Um, I was very hesitant, very nervous. And I had a lot of good people around me, a lot of the people who created DAO House. And they were like, it's not a big deal. Like it's, you know, it's fine. Just push the button and then like, see how it goes. <clears throat> and even if it's just an experiment, it's really an interesting space to be. It, I find that being a part of DAOs increases your communication skills massively because there's, it's like this flat system, right? There's no one at the top telling you what to do. There's no one at the bottom, like having less, less say than the others. It's like everyone is just on equal footing and you move in a position, you move in the direction that the group wants to move. So it requires a lot of communication and a lot of like back and forth and, it allows for people who really want to create value to um, present their ideas to the group and then to just push forward and to just create whatever they want to do. So our DAO, uh, the Raid Guild DAO, we're a decentralized developer agency. We basically wanted to build infrastructure so that other collectives of freelancers and engineers could spin up their own DAOs and they could start working as a group and making money in Ethereum right away, even if it's not an Ethereum but that's what our group is focused on. So everything we've created, um, you can look at our website that I'll post in the chat, but everything we've created is open source. It is available for the community to take and to implement um, on their own. And that's a whole new way of doing things, right? Like as an agency, as a, especially a developer agency, you would think, well, we wanna protect our assets. We, we built from infrastructure, but it's internal. We, we you know, it's a competition. But Raid Guild is not a competition. We are just excited to see more engineers coming into Web3, to see more groups empowered by the DAO frameworks. So everything we've created is open source and is available for the community to use and to, to fork. It's a developer term for copying something and then putting, it, um, putting your own name on it. There's only a few specifications. It's like if you're going to create something with a profit in it, then you need to like flow some value back to the original group that created it, which only seems fair. Um, and that's all about licensing. But Raid Guild has basically been around for about a year and a half, and they've generated 
I think over like $500,000 in revenue. They have 80 members um, from like 30 countries. They are building some of the coolest, most um, you know, advanced infrastructure inside Web3. And they have done it all just through a DAO, basically, through coordinating all their funds and all their activities through the DAO. Um, so that's what's really interesting. And that's the second path into Web3. The third path is hackathons and freelancing. And one of the leading organizations that I also work for, so a disclaimer, is uh, Gitcoin. And Gitcoin is a project that was started in, I think, 2017, maybe 2016, um, maybe even earlier. I should know this, but I don't. And um, they were founded by inside of one of the early uh, Ethereum organizations called Consensus. They were created as a bounty platform. They wanted to empower web developers to pick up projects as that, that align with their interests and get paid uh, amicably for that. So they created a bounty platform and they hosted it on Gitcoin. It integrates, Gitcoin is just the website. It integrates with GitHub, which is a place for open source developers to come and to um, basically merge code. So like you have two pieces, you two people working on a piece of code and then GitHub is the piece of infrastructure in the middle that merges it. So like one person can be working over here, the other person can be working you know, in a different country in a different space on a different computer and GitHub will merge the code and make sure that everything checks out. And then it'll actually push it to whatever website or a piece of infrastructure that you're working on. So it's very developer specific. It's very engineer heavy, but the bounty platform has <coughs> generate, generated a lot of value for open source contributors. It's a great place for people to come create bounties for their own project and to do events. Hackathons are anywhere from one day to one month of basically like hacking on your computer um, and trying to accomplish some goal. So you could be building a hackathon. You could be contributing to a hackathon for your own project, for creating um, applications or um, use cases for different blockchain organizations, or you could be hacking on a uh, content creation or hacking on um, a art piece of artwork. Like you can basically hack on anything. And that was a misunderstanding that I had in the beginning that hackathons are only for engineers. Well, only if you are an engineer. It doesn't necessarily have to be an engineer, but it's not always necessarily clear that hackathons are for everyone. I think every hackathon these days tries to create some non-technical bounties so that people who are from uh, marketing or you know, a creative writing background can contribute in a meaningful way. And we're trying to do better at that so that more people have inroads into these, these kind of projects. But um, hackathons can be uh, energy intensive, like sprint, I would say, versus like generally freelancing for other organizations. So it, it's often good to get onto a hackathon in the beginning, just to kind of throw yourself in the deep end of the pool to learn about the kind of things that other people are working on and to connect with a group of people who you might be able to work on more things with. Because hackathons generally lead other pathways into Web3 as well. So if you're like, oh, I really like this and this is my skill set, then you can find other people who might be, have complementary skill sets and organizations who have you know, a really nice pool of funds that they want to continue to, to feed out to the community of open source developers. Because open source relies on the contribution of individuals. Um, that's what makes it interesting, what makes the, the workforce decentralized, and what catches many voices from a community of engineers that might span the world. Um, so you can go to Gitcoin right now and you can find hundreds of bounties for various things from creating memes to creating hardcore Solidity code implementations, or you can find the events that are happening. I think Gitcoin is one of the leading Web3 hackathon event coordinators. They work with all the major names in the space and they're have a ton of revenue that's going out to developers and they have a grants platform that they've developed for the community. Um, that means if you have an idea or you have a project you've been working on, you can create a grant and you can get matched by the community and the organizations like Ethereum Foundation, MakerDAO, BadgerDAO that have basically chosen to say, we wanna support these public good projects and these open source infrastructure pieces. And it's open for anyone to create a grant on there and to get support for their idea and get matching funds.
Um, okay, well, that's like the, the three pathways, I think. And I just want to pause for a second because I've been talking a lot and see if anyone has uh, thoughts, feedback, or uh, a different direction they would like to see me go in. So just to uh, ask you again, the three ways to access or, or uh, understand Web3 is one is the crypto organizations, two is the DAOs, and, and three would be through the hackathons. Is that correct? So that's the three pathways to becoming like a Web3 contributor or to be starting to work in Web3. I would not say that that's the ways to understand Web3 as a whole, because it is much more intricate and complex and various <laughs> than that. <laughs> so if you're trying to, yeah, it's like, it's like, it's like, okay. like this is a good example, right? You're like, I'm in the forest. I'm trying to understand mushrooms. And you're like, okay, the mushroom is here. And like, that's what it is, right? It's the cap and the stem. But like really what the mushroom is, is underneath the forest floor, the mycelial network, like flowing information and bits of data back and forth. That's what Web3 really is. It's the thing underneath the surface that's massively moving, but you can barely see it because it's, it's just doing its thing underneath there, right? Okay. Rachel? I just want to share a little bit of, of my experience getting into Web3 because I don't have a tech background. Um, I have an arts and education background. And for me, getting into Web3, I think one of the first steps I took was I got on Telegram <laughs> because a lot of people who work in Web3 communicate via Telegram. And then I got on Discord, um, which is an application that's not really Web3, but they use it to communicate. And on Discord, there are hubs for all these different organizations. You can check out the communities. You can talk to the people who are contributing to those communities. So I feel like those were the first two steps I took as a complete newbie. I'm like, you know, didn't know a single thing, have any technical background, you know, understood computers like the average person, I would say. Um, and I'll put those links in the chat, but, um, and I, I would also just like to say that what Yela was saying, it's kind of this never ending learning curve. <laughs> it's really steep at first, and then you start to get the hang of it, but it's a constantly morphing, changing, growing, like entity, and you find your place in it, like you find what aspects you want to work in. Um, even if you're, you are a developer, like, oh, I want to work on humanitarian projects and I want to build those kind of platforms, oh, or I want to work, focus more on the financial aspects. Like there's so many different things to, you could choose from, and it's kind of like, you just have to jump in <laughs> and check everything out and see what starts to, what you start to resonate with, but I'll put those things in. Yeah, uh, just to, to second what Rachel was saying, the, the key, I think, to finding the right space for you is checking in with yourself and saying, like, what feels valuable to me? What feels interesting to me? Like, where do I want to be spending my time? And who are the kinds of people who um, I would might find it interesting to spend time and, and solve problems with? Because there's a lot of noise in the Web3 space. There are tokens, there are integrations, there are, you know, trading, there are all of these projects and there are NFTs and art. And there's all of these projects that are happening in tandem. And it's often hard to figure out where you should start. But that's where, for me, the idea was, I just want to, I, I didn't even know what I wanted to do in the beginning. I just knew I wanted to get out of my regular like corporate job and do something that I, I really was inspired to do. And so I actually like, I, lucky for me, I met a person who like owned a crypto house in Europe and they were like, hey, do you want to come live at our crypto house and, and learn about Ethereum and, and hang out basically? And I was like, uh, sounds crazy. Yeah, let's do it. So I moved to Barcelona in uh, the summer of 2018 and I was able to spend six months working with engineers and developers, not like hardcore, but like I was there 
maybe writing some blog posts, reading a lot, doing like, um, do, like making memes and stuff as well. Like just because they were like, yeah, that's, that's always helpful, right? Because memes drive culture. Um, and so I was learning a lot about that application and that was a donation based application that was designed to help realign the incentives of charitable donations. And I don't know what happened to them now, but they're, they helped me get my start in the Web3 space. And by purely just sticking around, being around interesting people, going to events, going to places like DevCon, which is the Ethereum conference of the year, uh, ETH Denver, which is the Ethereum conference in the US, and all of these other really interesting events where people were coming together, they were sharing ideas, there was talks. I just started to like, my vision of what was possible started to expand. And I started to make friends and people who were really nice and really cool people. And they were living this kind of like really interesting life. They're jet sitting all over the world and they're giving talks and they're, they're sharing ideas. And I was like, oh, this is what I want to do, right? I want to be in this like totally mobile environment where I can like pick up and work from anywhere and I can collaborate with people. And to Rachel's point, it is a very connected lifestyle. It is, you're on your computer, you're on your mobile, you're in Zoom calls. Um, and it just depends on like what you do, but these Discord and Telegram are great like hubs for people to come together because I believe like Web3 is all about communication. It's about like staying connected, communicating what's happening, you know, letting people know. And sometimes we get to a point where it's like over communication. There's so many things happening, there's so many events. And you're like, how do I just focus on what I want to do? And that's where it's important to find a group, to find an organization, whether it's a corporation that you're working with or whether it's a DAO that you're uh, volunteering to, a group of people who you really enjoy spending time with and who your interests align with their interests. And you can add some value in that group because then your learning path is going to be directed by whatever it is that inspires you and whatever you want to be spending your time on. And if that's making a, ton of, a bunch of money in crypto, that's totally okay. There's tons of groups that, that want to do that. For me, it wasn't, wasn't necessarily interested in finance and I, I had never had a background in like trading. Um, so like those kind of groups of like how to maximize your yield in a certain coin were not really interesting, but kind of funny enough, like just through the exposure of working with projects that I found fascinating, I was exposed to like token projects that became very successful. And like, I like almost inadvertently invested in those projects because I was just like, oh, I want to buy whatever it is you're creating. A really good example of that is the Metafactory. Um, the Metafactory is essentially a DAO that runs, on, um, that runs on the robot token. And the robot token is the governance token of Metafactory. And Metafactory is basically like an aggregator of artists, production, and distribution for merchandise of any kind. Um, they've made shirts, hats, shoes, socks. They're making a um, they're making a rubber ducky for a, a one token project launch right now, and it's it's owned by the community. So the token, the robot token, is the community is the token of the community, and they'll have a lot more governance in the future. Like what we want to create, what kind of merchandise we like, what what facilities we want to use. And then creating these small micro factories all around the world that can distribute merchandise really easy and quickly. Um, and then it just flows value back to the creators. But to me, that was such a fascinating project. I was like, that's so cool. What if you could incentivize the buyers of the merchandise and the creators of the merchandise and then put them together in a group where they're like seeing the value flow back to them and to the organization. So it's not just like Louis Vuitton that's like, we hire people and we sell things and then you pay and we pay them. But it's like, everyone is deciding how much they want to contribute and like where they want to spend their energy and they can use their tokens to vote on the things they believe in and they're inspired to do, which I think turns the whole industry on its head. Rachel? The other thing I just want to add to that is the difference between Louis Vuitton and like something like Meta Factory is Louis Vuitton, um, they pay the labor very little. <laughs> Where in the crypto space web three, people are more interested in, in equal or fair value exchange. And so that's a very big um, like section of web three that is um, and a very big topic of web three is like how, what is value exchange? What does that look like? 
how do we make it fair? How do we make it easy? Like, even if you're just showing up and you're present in this meeting, for instance, and you don't say anything, but just like you being present, there's a value to that. So there's that kind of conversation that happens. So there is, I just want to point out the difference <laughs> because there are some things that are coming from like our traditional world that are just kind of being copied into Web3 that I would say aren't that useful. But then there's the things that we're taking from our traditional world and like, okay, this isn't working. How can we make it better? And that's one of those ways. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And the Web3 community is a community of highly um, aware individuals, in my opinion, of people who are aware of the systemic problems that exist in society and in corporate America, corporate world today. Um, and they're trying very hard to create new systems that solve those problems because we inherently have an issue with corporations that are like, we made a business, we have a profit, we have shareholders. And like our first interest is to serve those shareholders at the cost of everything else, the environment, the workers, the conditions. And so it's this kind of like hard problem to solve that companies are trying to be, make a profit for the people who they're incentivized to do that for, but without doing it at the expense of all of the other pieces of the puzzle. And I think Web3 is a good starting point to try and solve those things because we're turning the value, we're flowing more of the value to the community, to the individuals who are helping create this um, new structure, this new organization. And it's not perfect, right? It hasn't been solved, but it's a great starting point and it's a wonderful time for experimentation, just like the early web was in the 90s, right? Of like, we can do better than this, right? We can spread information easier than this. There's got to be a better way than like publishing books and sending faxes or something like this. And then, ha, the internet, right? No one thought that was possible before. How could we have this web of information flowing back and forth seamlessly? It was a crazy thing to think about. And now with Web3, I think people are trying to think, how could we have value flow to where it actually belongs? And how can we redefine value in the sense of like, a person is valuable just for existing and they deserve something for that and their attention is worth something. So platforms like Facebook, Instagram, um, Twitter, all these things, they have created this really kind of, I would say toxic environment for extracting attention from their users and they don't give you anything for that but they are making billions of dollars on that attention economy. And so this is one of the big problems that we see in the existing ecosystem that these companies have created walls around the data that they create and that they use and then they sell. And Ethereum is all about creating um, equitable opportunities where the value is. And attention is valuable it's been proven that attention creates revenue. You're selling things, there's ads. And so the users deserve a piece of that value. And so with things like Metafactory and other projects, they're finding ways to reward you just for paying attention or just for buying. So with Metafactory, for example, if you bought a shirt from any time in the beginning of Metafactory to now, you were given something like $300 in tokens just for buying a shirt or a hat or shoes, because what they're doing is they're flowing value from the merchandising sales back into their token. And then they automatically distribute the token to the purchasers of the merchandise. Because what they're saying is you guys who are buying our merchandise are create, making our business successful, right? And then they're giving the tokens to people. And they're saying, the hope is that in the future, you can use this token to participate in our governance and decide where we go with the project and what we do. And I, I've seen the feedback be you know, really good, really fascinating, not to mention that the token exploded to over $100 in value in like eight weeks, which is really, really uh, exciting to think about where they're gonna be in the future if this token has all of this value and it hasn't even been utilized for governance yet. Uh, question? I just wanted to make sure that, that was answering your question, Zachary, or if you need more. Oh, boy. 
<laughs> no, it's it's helping me understand, and not to sound like a a total bonehead, but up until this point, I thought when people were talking about Web three, it was like a alternate, um, an alternate search or an alternate browser on the internet used to kind of. I don't know, maybe mask what you're studying or, or not not be part of the larger internet. Or now I understand that it's it's really a, a common space that all these ideas and all these cool new product and just all these cool people are connected to. So yeah, this is helping me a lot. I think awesome. for me, it, it it's easy to think or helpful to think about like, it, it's like doesn't live anywhere <laughs> kind of like the internet like even some of these websites we put they might be like I think they're all maybe have web 3 technology but some of them might have web 2 technology and I don't I mean honestly I don't really know the difference from that technical aspect uh, so much as like I know that they're you know maybe a wallet's attached a crypto wallet is attached but um, but it's, it's, again, it's kind of, it's things being built um, for, for us, for the power to go for power to go back to the people away from governments away from corporations, and for us to create sustainable uh, ecosystems, wherever you are in the world, regardless of what's happening in your country. So it's almost like it's nowhere and everywhere. Is uh, how I like well, it. Well spoken, Rachel. Thank you. Well spoken. Very cool. And, and and as well, it's not any one thing, right? You're you were absolutely right, Zachary. There are web three browsers, right? There are web three enabled browsers because right. having a, yeah, that's having a web three wallet. What I was using. So I yes. was like, oh, is this what web three means? You know, like it because the name in itself guide you to believe that you're like using a, a different technology or a, a, a new form so that's where i was getting misled so now you guys telling me this is like aha i see that's why it keeps popping up because it's connected to all these things that i'm interested in exactly and i think like the key is there are amazing technologies being developed right that are fall under the web3 ethos but Web3 is more of an idea. It's more of a mm. way of thinking about things and an evolution of like what the web is because we know the web's been hijacked by the corporate corporations of the world. And so Web3 is like about taking back the web and taking back our organizations and our structures and making them really serve the people who are contributing to those instead of serving like some person at the top or some like group of people at the top. Um, and the technology is just what powers all of that. But I often think we get confused and we get we we alienate people by talking about technology so much because not everyone is a technologist and can talk about you know JavaScript code versus Solidity and C plus plus and how all those things integrate or even financial markets, right? But people can talk about how there's injustice in the world. People can talk about how they've seen like you know corporations do a lot of damage to the environment and to their local communities. Um, and they want to see that change. They want to be a part of that change. They don't want to sit in a discussion group about code or about financial markets that are not interesting to them. So the goal is to channel that energy and those, those people who really want to be a part of it into this Web3 idea and this Web3 space without alienating them with technology terms, which is, you know, Rachel has been helping me a lot by the pausing. What's that word mean? Like explain that because it is key. I just wanted to welcome, I think is it you and I um, to the talk and allow, if you'd like to allow yourself to uh, introduce yourself, what you're interested in, what you're wanting to learn and know so we can help. I think maybe connectivity. Uh, hi. Oh, hi. Hello. Can you yes. Hear me? Hi. Yes, we can hear you. Seems like maybe, maybe it's breaking up on his side. Yeah. Okay, his connection is not great. There no we go. Yeah. Um, 
Cool. Well, we have about, you know, just less than 10 minutes less left. Are there any like in the chat or here as well? Are there any things, any directions you would like to be pointed in? Is there anything that I talked about that's like you're really interested in that and you'd like to know how to read where to go, what information to get, or like where to get started? Um, I'll just open that up really quick. Feel free to post in the chat or, or you know, communicate it. I, uh, I was interested in something Rachel said where, you know, aside of not really understanding a lot of the technical aspects, you can use Telegram and, and Discord to connect with the people that you, uh, you know, share interests with. I'm fairly new to both of them. How do you like find the groups or, or search within Telegram and Discord to get connected with, with um, these chats or, or these, these different groups? How do you do that? So Telegram is a little bit trickier, I find, because the search feature does not exactly make it like easy to navigate um, what groups are on Telegram. But generally, if you go, if you're on Google or you're searching for different projects, you will see that those communities have their own Telegram or their own Discord. Just look for the logo on the website. And if you click it, it'll take you right into Discord. So for example, the projects that I mentioned above Raid Guild, DAO House, MakerDAO, Gitcoin, they all have their own Discord, right? So if you just go to their website and you find the Discord logo, it's generally all the way down at the bottom. You'll go right into their servers. Um, some groups in Telegram are, um, some groups in Telegram are, you know, just announcement groups only. I find Telegram to be really good for direct communication. So if there's someone who you saw on Twitter and they're posting about something or they have an idea, it's great to send DMs back and forth. I find Discord to be a really good community conversation place. It's like a forum for discussions and for like more people adding thoughts back and forth. So like those are the two ways to think about it, I think. I, and there are Discord DMs as well, but I think that's the two ways. So any of those projects listed above are gonna have a Discord. You can also message me anytime um, here or you know in the email thread or on Discord if you can find me and just say like, hey, I'd be interested in learning more about this and I can point you to one um, because I just know a bunch of Discords. Actually, that would be interesting. Like maybe I should create a web page that has all of the Discord links for different communities on it and then I could just ah. point people to that. Aha. Aha. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I just want to say I just posted um, Pamvala's website. And what I would say, Zachary, is they have 42 communities that are reputable. They're doing amazing things in Web3 from, you know, security to humanitarian to, you know, what so many things. Um, and all you have to do is, is when you're on Discord, search for that name. And then the community will pop up um, and then you can decide if you know you can always exit out of the community if you're like oh, i'm not so interested in this but um that resource is a good place to start um and so if you click on the different links in the league you it'll take you to their website but you can just search for them in discord too because i believe they all have a discord channel yeah and the way to think about pambala is pambala is a community of communities they don't do anything but power community initiatives and community building like this, right? We're here just because we want to share this information that we have with as many people as possible. And we'll record it. We'll publish it to YouTube later so people can catch up. But the goal for us is not to create any kind of technology here. We're not like building any new thing. We're just sharing information with people who might want to contribute and get involved because we know that there's a value to that people getting involved and contributing to the space. Like Web3 is still tiny. There is still not a lot of uh, mainstream adoption for this stuff yet. People are just finding out about it. NFTs are leading the charge, but we want people to find inroads and pathways to meaningfully contribute. And so Panvala basically uh, creates this, makes this possible through their crazy uh, technology inflation subsidies budget that Rachel and I probably could not even explain to you. <laughs> <laughs> well god bless you guys thank you so much for your help it's um it's very insightful and, and awesome to hear 
not only you, Yaler, because it sounds like you have more of the the technological side, but then like Rachel has really helped me with just being, you know, just a, your everyday common person to understand where we connect with Web3 and, and then how that applies to the real world outside of technology and, and computers and all that. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's glad we're glad to have you here. It's always fun to engage with people who are beginning their journey. And uh, I was there like, you know, a few years ago myself and didn't know what the heck I was doing, but <laughs> and I was there, you know, really less than a year ago. And here I am now helping other people get involved. So, I mean, you, I think you can move really quickly in the space too, once you're making the right connections. Um, so yeah. The, the last question I have, Yaler, you were talking about some of those forums and some of these large gatherings. Are they still doing that being that it's COVID times or is everything more gauged towards computer and, and um, meeting on the internet? I, I mean, I know before they would have like these, you know, I guess in stadiums and like large gatherings of like these huge community of like-minded people. Do you know of any of those that are still exist and are going on right now? As far as IRL, like happening in real life, no, those are not really happening right now. There are a lot of them happening online in the interim. Like people are just kind of like spending time, like hosting events or doing workshops or doing talks. Um, one that I'll just post in the chat right now is Metagames MetaFest. They have had, I think like two weeks of like, talks and games and like bouncing around different communities um and it's a it's a really cool um, community called metagame but those kind of things have been really popular right now during covid times we're hoping by like uh, mid to later this year that we will start seeing some things open back up and um you know there are small events kicking off here and there it just depends on where it is because the community is so global and they're just like okay, well, we're going to be in the Ukraine perhaps for like a week, or we're going to be in Colombia for like 10 days. These hackathons happen everywhere. Um, and, but they've all been virtual just for the safety of the community and the participants because COVID really hit hard uh, last year. I think ETH CC happened in Paris and there was like 50 people that ca caught it and it was just breaking out. And then a lot of those people went to ETH Denver as well. And there was also a bit of a you know contagion thing there. So People were just for the safety and security of the community, not doing physical events, but we're going to see those opening up back very soon. And if you pay attention to Gitcoin, they always publish um, the events that are happening in their weekly newsletter, the weekly mint. So you can catch up and see what events are happening in physical space, if any are happening near you. But we, awesome. we are looking forward to a Panvala community event in real life, maybe maybe in Hawaii. Who knows? We're like planning it out right now when people feel yeah. safe. <laughs> yeah. you, guys, uh, you guys have a contact in Hawaii and also in Brazil now. So Awesome. What nice. island are you on, Zachary? I, I was born and raised on the island of Kauai. It's uh, said to be like more of the Hawaiian traditional um, laid back island it's the top of the chain it's the first island in the chain we both live there for six months yeah uh, ah. beautiful <laughs> island yeah we know I it, miss it. <laughs> <laughs> nice cool yeah. cool awesome well i think that's it for us this is the top of the hour right on you guys i really appreciate your help and uh it's been very insightful like i've learned a lot in this short period of time it's great good of course yeah we're glad to be here and uh, hopefully we'll see you for the next one if you have any questions i put my discord handle in the uh, chat of zoom so feel free to grab that and ping me anytime okay cool thank you so much yeah, have a great sunday so everyone thank you all for coming i'll email you the recording and the chat so you can have all the links too Peace. Bye. Thank you.